Hi, as promised, I'd like to build out on four items that Dan uh, Rice spoke about. One, bringing value down the road. Two, paying your dues. Three, the value of storytelling. And four, networking. I'd like to add another one that I thought of when he mentioned you could get a telephone call about a job interview. Let me first take a look at that first one. He said, the employer, the interviewer, is looking for somebody that can bring value down the road. That meant they're looking at you three, four, five, six years working for their business and what value through continual improvement you will bring. But, and that's part of the concept of paying your dues. Now, paying your dues is a baby boomer concept. It means, and I'm a baby boomer, and so is Dan Rice, it means that we th thought, at least in the past, that you would be hired and have your whole career with one company. Well, those days are gone. Believe me, they are gone. The economy, the recession, it's just changed everything. There's also, I think, a millennial difference. For example, millennials born between 1900 and the year 2000, changed jobs on an average nationally at 4.4 years. Now, that may not be true in the Midwest. I don't know. But that being said, all employers are looking for somebody they think will stay their career with their business. So you would never want to say, oh, I'll stay with you. I'll learn what... I need, and then I'll move on. You'll never want to say that. You can think it, you can do it, but you'll never say that. Dan also said, as you recall, that interviewers are looking for storytellers. Now, I tell stories in class in an attempt to relate whatever the material is to your world through my world, my generation to your generation. And that is what interviewing is all about. They want you to tell a story and not just end with yes or no. That is not going to get you a job. We're going to practice this week, next week, and really throughout the semester in getting you to tell about and write about your stories. And it relates directly to the concept of holding a conversation. Also, uh, I have a story to relate to networking. I was at dinner with the man I call Mr. Bickle and his buddy Herman. So Mr. Bickle, Herman, and I and their spouses were eating together. And suddenly, Ms. Herman says, hey, Skip, you work at Fort Hayes State University. We need an accountant. At the bank, he's a board member of a bank uh, out of county. And I said, well, sure, I can help you out. What did I do? I went to the Career Center. I hooked up the bank with applicants that were registered in accounting, banking, finance. And he started calling them. He interviewed a guy that I thought was a gem. They wanted uh, an individual in, that had majored in banking or finance that lived in that rural county so that he could understand the, the issues of the, lend, of the people who come in and ask for loans. That's a real life example of networking. Finally, I think about this. Sometimes I call students and here's the voicemail. Hey dude, I'm not around, leave your message. You gotta drop that. You could satisfy your friends by simply saying, Hi, this is Mary Ellen. I'm not available. Please leave your message. That's all you'd have to do. Because I guarantee you an employer calling to hear the dude message will not be impressed. Well, I hope this has generated some thoughts in your minds, and I really look forward to uh, where we're going next. If I can find the mouse to turn it off.